Art and Imagination with Jenna. So glad to see you. Remember that anything that you can imagine, you can draw and paint. Hello. So good to see you again this morning. We're going to be working on our, our uh, still life that we had last week, and we're going to finish up, finish up some of the parts of this uh, picture that we've got here with our eggplant and our onions and our lemon and our squash. So let's get busy. Let's not tally at all. I've been sitting here and I've been watering. I want to get the darkness in my table top remember it was dark so we're going to be putting a, a wash in there that that's going to make the, the the vegetables stand out a little bit better and I'm going to kind of use a bluish black in a way and uh, let's just start by putting that in there the tabletop was black remember but let's just put a wash in here that we can work on with our shadows also and get get the darkness because already you can see that squash is standing out a little bit better. We're going to be working on our uh, vegetables as we go along here, but I just wanted to get this darkness in there so that I can see the picture better. And I know you can too. So it's just fun to play in this watercolor. This is fun for me because I get to teach you some of the tricks and trades of a watercolor person. And you've got to decide what you like the best out of all the programming that we have here. We did drawing already and we're doing watercolor now on canvas. We'll also do some watercolor on uh, paper, watercolor paper, eventually. Just lay this in just kind of loosely. It doesn't have to be perfect. Our other watercolor, I looked at it the other day, and it certainly wasn't perfect on my part, but we're over that, so we're into the good stuff now. Stuff that you've got in your house that you can set up and draw yourself and make a painting out of it. I was noticing this morning that uh, with all the spring stuff out here, uh, vegetation around our houses. It's a good thing to go out and draw some of the vines and paint those. And the weeds, if you have weeds like I do. Okay, it's fun to go out there and, and, and draw them and come in and paint them with watercolor. Now I'm going to put another wash over my squash here and it's going to be kind of a light orange because this orange will, will combine with the yellow and it's going to give me more of a color but I've got my outlines here I don't want to put too much pigment on it I just want to wash and just let your brush do the work in the water and we'll get rid of those lines when we get into the the real part of the pigment. I'm going to do the same thing with the lemon over here. My palette's kind of a mess, but that's okay. I don't mind that. I like a messy palette. It shows that I'm busy working. And I'm going to reach over long reach for my purple. I'm going to put that purple on there again with a little more pigment in my, because uh, it's the main feature, that pretty eggplant. He's the star. So when you're a star, you want to shine pretty. 
My job as a teacher is to show you how to do it, and then you're going to do it your own way and develop your own style. That's always fun when a teacher tells you that. You're going to do it your own way, which you are. You're going to develop, you're going to take from what I'm teaching you here, and you're going to listen to other teachers for sure and gain from them what they think about doing on their paintings. And I might make him a little bit bigger going outside. This is the first time you can go outside the lines. <laughs> it's fun to go outside the lines. Now see how that, that darkness where I put that uh, paint the pigment, I'm going to let it sit there because that, that's, that's a good point. Because where the white spots are is a uh, highlight. And we're going to cover up some of that highlight with just hardly no pigment in my brush. We're just going to dabble at it for right now. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now on to our onions. I've got some gold over here, and I brought my big palette today, and it's too big for my table here. So I'm going to put in some of this gold on these onions. I'm just going to dabble it in there. If you like to dabble with paint, this is the job to do. I prefer to dabble. And we'll darken some of these spots as we go along. Wherever the water is clinging to uh, this paint, that's really good. I'm going to put some water inside this, this onion. And I'm going to grab some more of the gold. I'm going to reach very far. And I'm going to put that gold in there, because that's the onion part. The peel part, the, the part you throw away. So I'm just going to dabble that in there. Dry out my brush on my paper. And just dabble it in there. Like I said, the painting is, is building up. So you're, you're working from the canvas up. You're bringing it out. So each layer that we put on is, is going to be even darker than the last layer. So you all know what an onion looks like. So I, don't, I didn't bring the, uh, the vegetables with me today. In fact, I ate the, the eggplant. It's all gone was really good. Now I'm going to put a little bit of brown in here. I'm going to have to mix it with that color and a little bit of orange. A little bit more orange in there. want that really kind of dark. So I've got to mix my dark. It is too far over there for me to reach. So I've taken a little bit of orange, a little bit of blue, and a little bit of the, the black in here to make this darker. And I'm going to go into this eggplant. And he's got, he comes, it, it's kind of like a little stalk where they have uh, trimmed him off. So I'm going to put that on the dark side. Now I'm going to take, rinse my brush. And I'm going to take just a smidgen. We want this, this part lighter as we go around. And we're going to leave that center in there right now. We're going to leave it because We'll have to paint it when it's a little bit dry here on the outside. But I wanted to make the, 
movement, like it's like a stalk coming out at us. Now when we get over here to the squash, we're just going to take a little bit of that darkness and we're going to kind of go around. We're just laying down the, the, the brain work here for what we got to do. That's <laughs> what I call it anyway. And I want to put a little bit of dark in here using the same dark that I use with the eggplant. I'm going to put on this onion. I got my finger here in the, on the table here. But that's all right. We just clean it up. It's not drying too fast. That's the problem. And usually watercolor does dry quite fast. It's fun to spend time with you. I'm having a good time, that's for sure. Make this a little bit darker in here. Because remember, the light's coming from the top. So even though this eggplant is getting light on the top, it's going to be dark in there. Remember, we put in our shadow areas last time. We marked them, so we want to kind of put those in there for right now. And we're just going to be building this. Each time we meet, we will have another layer. And we want this dark in here because we want these vegetables to show up. And we have a shadow here. We're just laying the groundwork. With very thin paint. All right. Now we've got the layer on there now so that uh, we can really see it really well, and it is standing out. So now we're going to work on the shadows down here on this table. Doesn't have to be perfect, because we're going to make this kind of abstract, abstract out here in this uh, negative space that we've got going here, and we have a lot of it. So we're going to make this highlighted in the center with the vegetables. And then we're going to kind of abstract the rest of it. Put the indication of the table leg that we saw last time. And this table leg. Like I said, don't worry about it not being perfect. We're just laying in what, what we saw last week. This is not the detail time. That comes later. And that's the, the best time because I love detail. OK, we've got that table in there. Now we've got to figure out what we're going to do out here in this negative space. Let's soften that line up a little bit. I don't like hard lines if I can get away with it. But we'll let that dry. OK, now what I'm thinking is we're going to divide this canvas into parts. So let's say. Oh, let's say from the end of this table, we're going to go over here. And this is going to be one color right in here. So we have to figure out our map here. So I think let's go up to this part and make a line there. And that'll give us some kind of dimension on what we're going to put in our negative space. And I don't want it to be equal, so let's put a line there. Okay. 
I think that looks good. So we'll make this negative space different colors that's going to enhance our, our still life in the center. Now we know that uh, everything grows green in the spring. So let's put some green in here. Let's water it down. Keep our table leg there and the edge of our table. And of course, we're going to run into a little bit of color from each one of these uh, colors that we put on there, like the table and everything. But let's just spread the green, as the Irish say, spread the green. Because that comes from the garden. So let's just spread it there. Make, make it like green grass. It's okay by me. And let's get up here, combine this line with the green. Like I said, I have a huge canvas here, 18 by 24, I believe it is. And there's a lot of space to fill up in there. You're going to see that this canvas wells up the color which in a lot of respects, it just helps everything. Makes it more interesting. I really like what's going on in here. And this is why I brought my bigger palette because I can really get into the wells of the color that I've got in there. Let's put some more water in there. Okay, some of it light, some of it dark. I'm going to show you something else next time that we meet on making these backgrounds. You're going to find it very interesting next time. Okay, we're going to let that effect dry. Now let's go over here to this top corner. In order to stay with the color composition that we've got here on our table, because this table will be darker and this will stay kind of in a lighter effect. So let's see what color we can put up here in this corner. I'm going to throw some dirty water on this canvas which sometimes I save my watercolor water that is dirty because I can use it on paper to make clouds and everything else. So I save it in a bottle that I can use. So let's see, what color do we want to put in there now? I think maybe a, a red. Red and green are opposites. And that's why we have Christmas red and green, because they complement each other. So this corner is going to complement the other corner. Like I said, I just want to wash in there so that we know how it looks and we may, may want to change it. Just spread the paint. This is the sloppy part of putting the watercolor together on a big area. Unless you're doing people and stuff like that. And who knows, we might put some people in there. Make it real abstract. Okay, we're going to let that red dry. We want to float a little bit more color up in here. Now that's called floating. What I just did by putting a lot of water in my brush and some pigment in my brush, that's called floating. So let's float a little bit more. 
because I don't want it just so totally smooth. Because the whole, the whole, uh, uh, the vegetables here are going to be smooth and, and very detailed. Okay, now that's going to be drying. Now we got to figure out what are we going to put at the top up here. We've already got green and red. So what comes to mind? How about let's wet it all up again. And you can see why I use this dirty water for clouds on, in watercolor because I'm spreading it out here and that dirty color is, is there, but that's okay for what we're doing. So let's throw some yellow in there. Keeping it all complementary, red and green and yellow are all kind of cousins, so to speak, in color. So we're just having fun, just slopping around here. And it's okay if some of this green, in fact, I've done this so many times in paintings for backgrounds that I like is to tip them and let them run. Because let me show you how this works. Let's see if that, see how, the, how it's running? It makes for a great color and uh, conversation as you watch it run. I like that. Let's keep it like that. Something a little bit different. And I like being a little bit different. Okay, now we've got this quarter over here. And let's see. Let's get it all wet in this one little corner. Let's make two, two pieces out of this. And let's do the uh, purple again over here on this side. Red and purple, the red hat ladies will love this. Can't get to my palette, but let's move this down a little bit so I can. We're gonna have to fix this. Okay, let's get this floating all the way up here. Now, I don't want this purple too predominant because I want my eggplant to be more predominant. So I'm just going to swish it in there. And let's combine some of this. Let's make it run. Now the water, the paint won't go into where the water is not. So you don't have to worry about the edge of your table. See, the water stopped, it's, the paint stopped there because I haven't got any water into it. <laughs> this is too much fun. Now I'm going to put a little more green over here. So that it will run also. Too much fun. Watch it go. Oh, I like it, so I'm going to stop it right there. I like that. Okay, let's see what we can put over here. Uh, how about a little bit of orange? Purple and orange go together. We do that at Halloween. Now I didn't wet the, I didn't wet the canvas, but I did put a lot of pig, er, a lot of water er, in the pigment that I'm pulling out. And that kind of gives it a kind of a rusty tone with this dirty water and my orange. Yeah, 
You know, you can do anything as long as you can imagine it. You can do it. This is called Art and Imagination with Jenna. Something a little different for everybody. So much fun. Okay. Now, I kind of like the way that the water has gotten into the corner of this table. Right in through there. So I'm going to make this corner a little bit darker. I'm going to run it this way. And I'm going to take my dirty water and I'm going to move it up. on this table. <clears throat> this is the imagination part of this program. Art and imagination. <coughs> Excuse me. Need some more water. And the, the linen in this, ca <coughs> in this canvas, excuse me, Needed a drink. <coughs> My throat's dry. The imagination that you can create. <coughs> is priceless. Like I said, the table was dark. And that's going to make these vegetables show up a lot better. You want lots of water in there. It's beginning to look like a watercolor. I can see on camera. <laughs> Just think, you don't need any super big talent to do this. Just draw something that you like and then start to have fun with it. Okay, I'm going to kind of soften these lines over here with the water. And you have to do this kind of more in stages than we're doing right now. I usually do this kind of a thing, like letting the, letting the paint run, and then I let that dry while I paint on something else because it's hard to come in here and do this all <laughs> in half an hour and keep it running really good. So at home you should have a lot better luck today than me. Now I'm going to put these shadows in here to this table. Because it has an edge. So here we go. And it will fade too. We want this edge dark also. Darker. And this one darker. But you just keep letting it run. And I'm going to go back in there on this leg and I'm going to soften this edge with some water because I want it to combine. And this is a art and imagination half an hour with Jana. 
So play with your watercolors and play with your fruit. Make a still life. You can do it. Anybody can do it. Anything that you can imagine, you can do. But we've been having fun this half an hour, so it's just about time to close down the shop here in the studio and call it a lot of fun. And next week we'll be putting in the details of this fruit and it's going to look totally different than what you got right now. So yours doesn't have to look like mine. In fact, I hope it doesn't. I hope it looks like something that you've created, not what I have created. So keep up the painting. Have a lot of fun with it. And art and imagination will come back to you next time. Goodbye for now. Thanks for being with me today. I hope you've learned something from the lessons that I've been giving you. Just remember, if you can imagine it, you can draw it or paint it. So I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.